Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good PlayStation news coming out over here, and also just general game news going out, because some of these also might be coming out for Xbox too, of just a lot of really big, brand new AAA games either being announced, leaked, talked about, mentioned in proper, like, legal, like, public trading company type stuff, you know what I mean, and just a lot of cool news to get to go and share with all of you guys. So we're going to go talk about this all throughout this video, so if you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy. We also have a lot of kind of brand new news coming out too as well for a lot of stuff throughout these next few days, so definitely make sure you guys are subscribed, notifications on, check out the nice little Samsung link down below for the How link. If you guys get your $50 off, your no obligation needed signups for the brand new Samsung phones. We have the Twitter and Twitch down below with Amazons, and let's dive into the video itself. So as you guys may or may not heard, we have heard a lot of good news. First and foremost, and for most, we had a little bit more Spider-Man news coming out over here, but also, once again, some other Sony IPs such as Bungie and EA and other stuff. So, first and foremost, we have the kind of cool news where Insomniac has now offered a brand new look at the Spider-Man 2's Venom. Now, as you guys do know, Spider-Man is the next big, major, major game we're going to be on the lookout for, and, well, all around, I'm kind of excited for it. And, of course, a lot more people want to know more information on the Venom and Venom vibes because, well, Venom is a pretty big mainstay character. It's the main evil villain in the game itself, most likely. So, basically, the studio will reveal a lot more details about the game during a comic con panel this week but we had a little nice little teaser in set and just a lot of cool talk about it as of right this second so right now there's a new screenshot of the character can be shown below it's all been officially like promoted by the actual developers themselves so it's not like a ui or render or some fake or whatever it's actually from the game itself and when they had a chance to go and speak to some of the game developers ahead of the bigger comic-con reveal later on this week so Candyman actor tony todd will be voice acting the symbiote fueled venom in the upcoming ps5 sequel insomnia creative director brian intar told ew that he put off casting the character for as long as possible because i was so scared of who we were going to get to do the voice. He added, We knew it would be so anticipated that people would have a lot of opinions on it, and I think so far, I think a lot of people are happy with this call, just in general. So that's a pretty cool, I don't pretty good thumbs up for this one. So thankfully for Insomniac, Todd decided to submit an audition tape for Spider-Man 2. Everything we talked about with Venom with that sense of strength, that sense of fear, that sense of overwhelming, so different from Peter, Tony embraces that completely in the performance themselves. You guys can kind of see the artwork too, and these characters are starting to look absolutely sick. And I'm kind of getting that nice little nerd heebie-jeebies where I just can't wait to get to go and play the game. So senior art director Jessina Chu also discussed the character's visual design. <laughs> so one of the characters we had throughout uh, throughout the production was, how much does Venom talk? I remember, did we say, did we have some concepts early on of does he even have lips? Does he laugh? Does he smile? Does he frown? It's a fine line between all that too as well. But the one of the bigger things I need to note is we're gonna be releasing up a lot more additional information up on this next upcoming event. So we'll probably have a lot more Spider-Man news coming out soon. But that's kind of like just like a fun little bit and piece of news. Some of the cool news over here is this on Bungie. So as you guys do know, Bungie as of currently is, an actual Sony subsidiary. Yeah, they had a chance to go buy a Bungie for a few billion dollars. So Bungie and EA veterans from uh, basically go and form Look North World. So Bungie founder... So the OG homie himself, Alex Zorpian, leads a brand new studio, and its first new title will be a shooter called Outlaw Corral. Now, as you guys do know, Bungie's been a powerhouse throughout all these years with Halo and also, obviously, Destiny, and seeing brand new games overall is fantastic. So EA, Bungie, and Congaray alums have now formed a new game studio called Look North World. Kind of a weird name. The developer was established by Alex Zorpian, Jay Peco, Patrick Moran, Kyle Marks, Aaron Moran, <laughs> and Prashit uh, Patel. So Sarapan, who founded Bungie Studios, will serve as the CEO for North World. And then Pacho is the chief. Uh, Pacho, I'm splicing these names all correctly, horribly wrong. Is the chief financial officer, and Morgan is the chief operating officer. And a few of these folks are just basically really big higher ups on these overall things. So the studio's first game will be Outlaw Corral, a Wild West inspired shooter, which we do see the occasional game like that. Let's say for Red Dead Redemption. Uh, those pretty, I mean, it's always been fun. We've had a few other indie games out there, too. Even some games like Hunt Showdown, etc. that are kind of out there and kind of cool. But at the end of the day, we haven't seen too many, like, majorly prioritized, pure PvP, Western-style games. But like I said, even for, like, Red Dead, it'll be included, but it's not, like, the main focus. So I'm actually kind of excited for this. Whether it's, like, more of, like, a game like Hunt Showdown, or it's more of, like, a area-based, or, like, looter shooter, or RPG, or BR, or whatever it might be, I'm kind of excited to go and see this. It's kind of the first time we've actually had a chance to see this 
Series 2 as well. So look, uh, North Wild World said it's the first of several games being developed, and of course, if you have Bungie themselves, uh, I'm not really sure how much they're tying to is the actual PlayStation subsidiary Bungie, or there's like a pure, like, clear cut, or if there's any tie-ins, or if they even have a PlayStation connection, or even Xbox connection right now, but it's very curious to go and see how this may turn out. So developing in the UAMFN opens a whole new world of opportunities, and we are in uncharted territory. Through exper experimentation, we will see what players like and involve them in the decisions and basically kind of building up a game from scratch. We are jumping into it with the virtual sky is the limit mentality, and as we develop creative ideas, we will learn how these platforms engage, entertain, and boost social interactions in order to iterate accordingly, which I think is cool. So it basically kind of seems like they're going to be like, hey, either we're going to go and maybe focus more on PvP. Okay, people don't like that, maybe we'll do more on like the actual idea of like a looter shooter think like maybe like an escape from tarkov or as well like i said maybe a hunt showdown which is more of like a like little area based br slash looter shooter slash extraction game like basically you could do almost anything you want or even try to make a game that's even like a halo or even like a bungee where you have like bosses and fights or whatever you kind of want to go and do over time now granted it might be a bit of a harder game to make a game like like a destiny type style game with well cowboys but then you never know i mean look at the vision stuff like that it's always possible so either way that's actually i think in my mind really cool big news now we even have some even bigger news too as well because i've always loved the resident evil games and capcom's been doing very very quite well or apparently resident evil 9 is aiming right now for a 2025 release. So this actually has been pseudo kind of announced now, saying the big Capcom game to be announced later on this year. So this might just be an earlier leak itself, and there isn't really that many massive, massive other Capcom games out there, besides games such as, like, say, Resident Evil. There's a few big ones out there, don't get me wrong, we like Capcom, but it's one of the bigger ones, I'd say, for most folks. So insider Dust Golem has claimed that Resident Evil 9 is aiming for a 2025 release window. We also have all those Silent Hill games that'll probably be kind of somewhat segmented, released between that two as well, or even after towards two, which I'm very hyped up for, and will likely be announced next year. He also adds that there is a big Capcom game that will be announced later this year with a fall 2024 release date. Replying to a user inquiring about Resident Evil 9 release date on his Discord channel, does Golem reply, 2025, I'll say that much, though probably will be announced next year. I won't answer any further RE stuff, but I'll throw that bone out there, which is kind of a really big, like, rough vibe, but still, it's out there, you know, it's kind of nice to see. There's a big Capcom game being announced at the end of this year, too, as well, that's releasing in fall 2024, and likely Resident Evil 9 will be announced next year and released in 2025. So they haven't officially either done, like, a trailer, tweet, announcement, or anything else in between with that so far, but it's very fun to go and see that, just in general, so it's kind of fun to go and see that we have more games coming out. Now, it's also giving kind of cool news over here from Matt Piscata, Anyways, U.S. consumer spending on non-mobile video game subscription services actually went up. So think like a PlayStation Plus, Nintendo, or even Game Pass was actually up in May uh, versus uh, basically over here. So it's basically up like over 3% now for the 2023 year to date. So kind of cool. So basically has a 3% growth compared to the 8% growth of 2022 and the 24% growth, although that might still have been kind of tied with the pandemic itself, is kind of cool. So either way. They are still expanding and growing up the game subscription market, so it's nice to see that. We vibe that. But at the same time, the growth has seems like it's going to slow down, and at some point, we actually may go and see a somewhat of a fall. I think a lot of gaming and gaming subscriptions are kind of on the mediocre side, although with things like Game Pass having a lot of big games, such as Starfield, coming out in the near future, we actually may see, once again, another year of growth. So we to see how that kind of goes out. But at some point, we actually may see a stabilization, and they even go and say that some of the more important things out there is more focused, the tar like basically now is not the co target, the core audience as well, but go for the audience that is less engaged and make it very easy for those people to sign up. So maybe able to do like things like tiers, kind of how Netflix is doing right now with the new like uh, like ad programs, price programs, and caveats and all that type of stuff. It's like intriguing to see, but they want to make it easier for people to sign up or have a very easy introduction peer. Like say you have $5 and you get to do it for 50 hours a month, like, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. Whatever they want to go decide. But I do kind of agree it's a little bit of the convoluted system, especially with the brand new Xbox side. There's also a really big PlayStation summer sale going on right now in case you guys do want to check it out. Now, just a general like little heads up for that one. We also have some big more news for Baldur's Gate that apparently has now over 17,000 endings. Now, I've actually had a chance to go see a little bit of early gameplay for Baldur's Gate 3. The game looks sick. Like, it gives, like, a really good, like, P.O.E. slash, like, Diablo-type style, type, like, top-down, but more focused on an RPG, uh, which I think actually turned out fantastic. So, either way, is really cool. So, there's going to be over 17,000 endings. Now, this game is definitely slightly 
different and I think a little bit more on the hardcore side for RPGs because it's definitely more on like the D&D type side although I still think this will be maybe a nice competitor with Starfield I think Starfield has this in the bag like without even any questions but there is also a really nice niche of folks who kind of like more of those top-down games think Diablo and as well also people who enjoy more of a hardcore experience which this kind of seems a slightly more hardcore experience than Starfield Starfield almost kind of seems like you know Skyrim it was a good game good RPG but a little bit more goofy and fun rather than more of like a really really hardcore game as well well, if you guys know what I mean. It's also kind of cool to go and see. And last but not least, everyone hates Diablo. Uh, basically, everything got nerfed. I'm actually not excited for this upcoming season. I'll probably check it out still, maybe make a source. I've been playing stuff on my Twitch stream a little bit, but at the same side, I'm a little bit sad either way. So give me your thoughts and comments. All these really cool game stories as well. Make sure you guys check on the Samsung link down below in the how link. We have the Twitter and Twitch if you guys want to follow. Subscribe if you guys are new and check out the Amazon links. And I appreciate y'all so much for watching in the first place.